It is a big deal to leave your first love because it can lead to worse things down the road. It's not unlike the love that newlyweds have that I already referred to. Now I'm not saying that even after you've been married for years that you should have the emotions of a person that just met someone else. You know, maybe when you first met your husband or wife-to-be or maybe it's your boyfriend or girlfriend right now, it was a big thing. You saw them and you got all excited and you were nervous about meeting them and you didn't know what to say and then you spent some time together and even now when they walk into the room, your, your mouth goes dry and your head gets light and your heart feels like it has butterflies in it. If I still felt that way, with my wife that I've been married to for 37 years, she'd probably think I was having a heart attack. <laughs> See, the, the love of marriage is deeper than the mere emotional thing that brings you together. C.S. Lewis put it this way, quote, being in love first promised them, excuse me, being in love first moved them to promise fidelity. This quieter love enables them to keep the promise. It's on this love that the engine of marriage is run. Being in love was the explosion that started it. So God is not saying, I want you to always have your heart of flutter and have an emotional experience with me. He's saying I want a deeper, committed, lasting love and I want it to stay strong for a lifetime. I mean, think about how things were when you first started taking your wife or your husband out somewhere. You know, you did all the right things. You, first of all, you opened the door for her, right? For your car. Do you still do that? Or do you just get in and she has to knock on the window because the door's locked? <laughs> knock, 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 knock. <laughs> then you kick it open. <laughs> When you would go to a restaurant, you'd open the door for her right this way, my dear. And then you'd go over to the table and you pull the chair out. Here you go, have a seat, put it in. You'd take her to her favorite French restaurant. You would have a little gift for her. You wanted to impress her. Then you got married. <laughs> Things have changed. You still open the car door for her. You just close it before she's all the way in. You still pull the chair out for her in the restaurant, you just don't put it back in. And then when she falls on the ground, you point and laugh. <laughs> you still give her little gifts while you just gave her, her, her your dirty laundry yesterday. And you take her to the finest French restaurants. What was it? Jokins et Box? <laughs> we'll get some French fries. That's French, isn't it? Or we could go to Les Golden Arches. Ha <laughs> ha! Now things have changed. I read an article in the paper that shows how marriage can change and the article is called The Seven Ages of the Married Cold. Year number one, your wife's getting the sniffles. Oh, sugar dumpling. I'm worried about my baby girl with those sniffles. There's no telling with all these things going around and, and I don't want you to get any worse so I'm gonna check you in the hospital. And I know the food isn't good there, so I'm gonna go to your favorite gourmet restaurant and bring you in a meal. I just want you in good health. That's your number one. Your number two, listen baby, I don't like the sound of that cough. I've called the doctor, he's gonna rush over here, now get to bed like a good girl. Your number three, you'd better lie down, honey. Need a little rest if you're not feeling well. Do we have any of that canned soup left? Your number four, now look, honey, after you fed the kids, washed the dishes, and finished the floors, you ought to lie down. <laughs> You're number five. Why don't you just take a couple of Tylenol or something? <laughs> You're number six. I wish you would gargle or something and stop walking around barking like a seal. <laughs> You're number seven. For Pete's sake, will you stop sneezing? Are you trying to give me pneumonia? <laughs> what year are you in right now, huh? All the wives are kind of looking over. <laughs> the sad thing is when you're a preacher and you say stuff like this, your wife will quote these things to you. She'll say, oh, that's the seven stages of a married cult. You're in like phase seven. Oh, great, okay, right. Yeah, maybe you've lost something there and that can happen in your relationship with the Lord as well. Remember when you first came to faith in Jesus Christ? What a joy it was 
to pray. I mean, he never knew that you could talk to God and he realized you could call upon him wherever you were, no matter what you were facing, you could pray. It was a privilege and you utilized it. Then there was the Bible, the missing user's manual of life. Now you had the book that told you how to live your life, the book that told you what your priorities ought to be, the book that told you how to be a good husband, a good wife, a good parent, the book that told you how to get to heaven, most importantly. And then there was church. Man, you couldn't wait to get to church. You would go to a Sunday service, a midweek service, even another service. Then you would listen to Bible teaching on the radio, read Christian books. You couldn't get enough in your life. Sharing your faith, man, that was easy. It was the overflow of a Christ-filled life. You're always looking for opportunities to talk to someone about Jesus. Well, things have changed. You still study the Bible. It's not as much as you used to. After all, you've studied all those years. That ought to be good for something. And you're not so sure you're gonna read anything you haven't read before, so you'll get to it if you find time in your busy schedule. Prayer, oh yeah, you'll pray. It's not so much a time of prayer as much as it, as it is just a quick prayer here and there. Oh yeah, sure, you wanna be at church. In fact, you sit in the same place every Sunday. Thank you very much. And no one better try to take your stinking seat. <laughs> but if that preacher goes over his a lot of time, you're not happy. And you also sometimes will leave early to beat the traffic. Oh yeah, you still share your faith once in a while. But you feel now they should just look at your example as a follower of Jesus as opposed to actually going and starting a conversation. You know how awkward and uncomfortable that can be. Here's my question for you. Have you left your first love? Jesus says, remember from where you have fallen. 